can you cock a bathtub with that? I don't know. I was thinking like <laughs> the teeny star hole, you know, in there. Let's get down real low. Today we're in the test kitchen talking about ultra specific kitchen tools. There are tools out there that have a super specific purpose in the kitchen. And these are a few of our favorites. Ooh. This is wild to me. Some tools, I find them to be very, very helpful in my kitchen. It doesn't mean that everyone needs it. But you're not using this for anything else, and that's okay. Food is very personal, and so is our kitchen tools. Today, I'm gonna talk about a Danish dough whisk. It's different from like your regular whisk because of the way it's shaped. The wires are thicker, and it is usually used for mixing heavier doughs. Have you seen one before? I don't think I have. It kind of looks like a face. It does. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> this is your standard balloon whisk, mm -hmm. and this is the Danish dough whisk. So this is usually used when you want to incorporate air into something, right. right? The purpose of a Danish dough whisk is to fold and not mm. incorporate air. And think about it, if you were to mix a really heavy like dough batter with this. That sounds like a nightmare. Exactly. <laughs> you would not be working smarter. You would be making more work for yourself. Yeah. And you would be wasting a lot of your bread dough because it's all going to get stuck inside and it's going to be a pain to clean. So I have a little kind of flour and yeast mixture. Are we having a pizza? <laughs> yes, pizza party. <laughs> you add your water. Mm -hmm and then you mix. You are going in circular motions, but because of the way this is shaped and all of these like coils, it is like folding the dough. Try it. Wow. And you'll see how the dough kind of falls away from the whisk, right? Yeah, it and like hold. barely anything stick to it. Yes. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm the type of person who would want to keep my hands as clean as possible so I can scroll on my phone if I want to. <laughs> priority. So, priority, yeah. So this is great. <laughs> and if you'll notice, when you do mix, it pulls away from the bottom of the bowl easier. That way you don't have any dry flour bits in mm. there. I'm really impressed by this tool. Sold. That's what I'm getting Jessie for her next birthday. Don't tell me. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about a very specific tool, a dry bonito shaver. I've seen one of these before. I've never I've never used one. I mean, talk about a specific kitchen tool. Yeah. I mean, this is real specific. Yeah, so this is a whole piece of bonito. They take a skipjack tuna, and they freeze it, and then they defrost it, and then after that, they go ahead and boil it, and then when they pull it out, they dry it and smoke it for, for about a month. And then after that, they let it sun dry, and then it becomes this. I mean, it's kind of incredible stuff. Yeah. You find the pre-shaved stuff All in a time. lot of Asian yeah. markets, and it's like faintly smoky and a little bit sweet, and like that kind of like oceanic kind of sort of back note. So this tool is specifically just to shave bonito. It has a little compartment here in the bottom that can you, you can kind of catch the flakes itself. It's a sharp blade, right? Just like any tools that the Japanese use, uh, it's very precise. So you want to hold it down and you want to just slice. So when you pull out the little gadget. Oh, super fresh. Look at that color. Yeah. You know, kind of ah, gorgeous. I smell that, Chris. And it's so like deep and yeah. funky. That's different. It's like way more textural. Mm -hmm. The intensity of the flavor just from the smallest quantity of that is wild. And like this kind of like disappears on your tongue, the store bought, whereas like what Harold just sliced, it's like still retains a lot of texture and just way more depth of flavor. Yeah, the difference is incredible. I mean, it's a showpiece, man. The, the place that I worked at was, uh, was a very traditional Japanese place, and the chef wanted the bonito place to be fresh every time. I mean, this is specific. I think sushi places use it also. I will put that directly into a, a, into a miso soup or something just to give it body, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? These old traditions are the best. What do we have here? This is awesome. Can yeah. I play it? Play it because it is named after an instrument. It is a katara, oh, or sometimes wow. called spaghetti. 
Kitara. It is a square type of spaghetti that it's gonna yield. You're gonna oh, see it when we run wow. it through. And it is a Kitara in the sense that it's the linguistic origin of it being like from a guitar. And, yeah. and this being like guitar strings. So you could That's even, so you cool. hear it, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I could strum that. Yeah, you can strum that. <laughs> and then also typically they come um, with two sides. This is gonna be a fatter, wider noodle. And then this is a side that's thinner that we're gonna demo today. I love it, it is a very sentimental value for me. I would not have this in my house unless it you know, served multiple purposes. purposes yeah. But this one I make an exemption. I've used it in a restaurant as well. I used to make pasta and very rarely we, we busted this out though. Cause this wow. is so labor intensive to do a production on the restaurant scale. Yeah, that but I sense. have used it in a restaurant production. Um, and then at home. This is really intriguing to me and I actually think I want one because I love making homemade pastas. So we have some um, pasta dough that's been rolled out. I'm gonna place it on top of this. This is a great size or width because as you put your rolling pin, it's gonna flatten and get wider. Okay. So let's see. You see that the, the dough has been pressed through the strings yep. and what's great is you can also help it along by going like this. Oh, that's cool. It's giving you strings. And so you're just gonna, you play the strings to kind of help it get loosened from the strings. And what it's gonna yield is these beautiful square spaghetti. I love those shapes. Yeah, this honestly for me, it's like however you wanna eat your spaghetti. Mm -hmm. So this is a square spaghetti. So you could see how there's edges to that's it. So really like, cool. you can do like a spring asparagus peas, you know, whatever. Primavera, talking my I think, language, right? speaking my language. I love it, I love it personally with like seafood, like sea urchin, you know? It's beautiful, right? Wow. And you can't get that shape. Yeah, you if can't get that I shape mean, with if the you're a pasta lover, if you mm. fetishize pasta tools, <laughs> If you, if this is your thing and you have your KitchenAid extruder and your attachment and you have your Imperia roller, um, this could be a fun addition. I'm excited to talk about this noodle basket. It is specifically designed to make perfect noodles. I want one. <laughs> you want one already? I don't even have to sell it. Great, we're sell done. <laughs> I love it for a few reasons. I'm not a big fan of a huge yes. cleanser and put it in in the sink and pouring boiling hot water down the drain. I feel like that's like kind of hurting my, the pipes. <laughs> and also, what if you need that pasta water? So you drain the noodles perfectly with the perfect portion inside and you still have the pasta water. You can go back to it as often as you like because it's not down the drain. I think that's great because that is a problem I have when I'm making pasta. You can also like not just noodles, you can like blanch vegetables or meat. It's multi-purpose. <laughs> so I have one portion of ramen here yeah. and this is the noodle basket. I'm gonna just add this noodle in here and then drop this into boiling water. All I need to do is lift this. How great is that? <laughs> and then you can do this to like get rid of the excess water and just straight into the bowl. And Amazing. you can top it with a ramen broth and it's ready to go. I think this is the perfect example of being a little bit more efficient in the kitchen. <laughs> it's really a tool that I love. It helps me make perfect noodles yeah. and a big slurper. I, I love it. So it says churro maker? <laughs> is that what it looks like? This is a cookie press. Okay, you know those Danish butter cookies yes. in the tin? I love Danish butter cookies, those are my favorite. I love these things. They're kind of incredible, and that's like roughly, you know, kind of like what this is. It's a cookie dough that's piped, and because it's piped and you don't have to shape it, you know, and cut it out, you're able to use a dough that has like a very high proportion of butter. Okay. So like that's why it's like so light, tender, buttery, because you don't have to put enough flour into it to be able to manipulate it by rolling it and then punching it. Awesome. So a cookie press, it extrudes the dough Good. and you can force it through these different plates. It's like a cock gun, you know, mm -hmm. if you've ever like recocked your bathtub or shower. So you need to do it right down on this thing. And it just pops out, you need and to like it pops cut it. out. So the cookie press gives you that ability to do those kind of like classic textbook Danish butter cookies. It's very specific. But this is something that I grew up with because um, my grandma would always make these, you know, what she called spritz cookies um, around the holidays. We actually, I think we have some vintage ones still hanging around. 
gotta be shitting me. Look at this thing. The Christmas tree, also a tiny star. The zigzag Charlie Brown, what is that? I don't know, what's this? This allows you to make a lot of cookies really quickly because you can just go down and boom, 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 boom. You could never get this kind of pattern and shape, you know, with the like kind of like, almost like that flower kind of petal thing, the various thicknesses, punching it out. That's good, man. More butter. Mm -hmm. Today it's all about the bamboo skimmer. I use it every day. Yes. It's really awesome for um, blanching vegetables, but I've found it to be more versatile than that. I'll even use it for making pasta. Oh yeah, to yeah. just scoop it out. To just scoop it out. Yeah. If you need to fry anything, you could also you know, Love scoop it, it out frying. without having the danger of very hot food touching yeah. your arm. I have a spider. I love a spider. I think yeah. it's an essential tool. I love it for doing a quick boil on my broccoli rob. Yeah. Because you never want to overcook them. And sometimes when you're using like a smaller tool, you can't get those bits and pieces of broccoli rob that settle at the bottom. And you want all of the vegetable, you do. right? So I'm just going to get this into a, a hot vat of boiling water. This bamboo skimmer is going to allow me to get all of the bits and pieces of broccoli rob out effectively when I'm in the process of blanching. There's nothing worse than overcooked vegetables, in my opinion, when they're like mushy and fall apart in your mouth. So just like that, you can even get yeah. a lot in one scoop. Look, there's yeah. minimal in the pot at this time and I'm just gonna get it. Beautiful green. Yeah, yep, and blanching in cold water immediately after pretty much allows you to retain that nice, rich green color of the vegetable. And in three scoops, I pretty much got everything out of that pot of boiling water. It comes in different shapes and sizes as well. So like, I like the wider, you know, seven inch tray. I like this one because to, I also use it to um, boil a lot of eggs sometimes. That's and a really so, great. Yeah, so I'll just kind of stack them on and then drop it. Yeah. And then I'll just ensure that they all stay intact and not crack. And they can all cook at once. I use this for frying mushrooms. Like I use yeah. it for pasta. It's so versatile, but Great I would skimming. say it's the most used tool for me. Yeah. Again, we're just so in sync. It's it's working. <laughs>